Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar and this is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Baribharti Sanjariharti Leelaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti Baribharti Sanjariharti Leelaya In the previous lecture, we studied the rules in the grammar of Panini stating certain important steps, certain processes required for the derivation of compounds or samasas. We continue to study this aspect in some more detail even in this particular lecture. So far, we have studied the semantic condition which is samarthaha padavidhihi we also saw the name of the process stated by Prakkadarat Samasaha. We also studied the necessary condition stated by Saha Supa. Then we studied the Purva Pada Nirdharana stated by several sutras in the section that begins with 2 to 30 onwards up to 2 to 38. Then comes an important stage where we add samasanta pratyaya. The pratyaya that is added at the end of the samasa. So samasanta pratyaya is a suffix. These are suffixes. And they are added at the end of the samasa. And that is why they are called samasanta at the end of the samasa. Samasa and anta. And this also implies that they are part of the samasa. They are not just placed at the end of the samasa having no relation whatsoever with the samasa. That is not the position. The theoretical position is that these suffixes, they are part of the samasa. Their function is to determine which formal processes the samasa will undergo when it becomes part of the sentence, that means an output. As we have already seen that the input for the process of compounding is a sentence. We need two or more interrelated words and then the process of compounding can start and then we do lots of operations and then generate the output in the form of a pratipadika which becomes a part of a sentence. So when this Pratipadika becomes a part of a sentence, what other formal processes it will undergo? This is triggered by this Samasanta Pratyaya. That is its main function. For example, ending of the word. So if an original word listed in the lexicon ends in a consonant and after adding the samasanta pratyaya, if the word becomes a vowel ending word, now the samasa will be treated and will be considered as a vowel ending pratipadika. And in accordance with this, the samasa will take the next derivational stages and then it will be able to produce the final output in the form of a subanta. So the ending of the word will be determined by the samasanta pratyaya. Also addition of the suffix. 
which indicates the feminine gender. This is also dependent on the samasanta pratyaya. Whether the feminine suffix a is to be added or whether e is to be added is determined on the basis of the samasanta pratyaya, more specifically on the basis of the markers attached to, to these samasanta pratyaya and we shall see the examples. Also, this samasanta pratyaya functions to determine the accent of the generated compound output. These are some of the functions of the samasanta pratyaya and therefore it is accepted that this pratyaya is part of the samasa. Such an important part of the samasa called samasanta pratyaya, they are stated in the section governed by the Adhikara Sutra samasantaha and this is 5468 and this goes up to 54160 that is the final sutra of 5.4. So what this means is that end of the compound suffixes are stated in these 90 plus sutras. So end of the compound suffixes are stated to all major four types of samasas in this particular section from 5468 up to 54160. And the samasanta pratyayas with respective samasa are stated in sutras with the tag of that respective samasa. So for example, avyayi bhave sharat prabhritibhyaha. The sutras beginning with this, they will tell you the samasanta pratyayas that are added at the end of the avyayi bhava samasa. Similarly, you have bahubriha satyakshnoho swangat shachik. This sutra states the samasanta pratyaya shach in the bahuvrihi compound alone and so on and so forth. Dvandvachyuda shahantat samahare. This will tell the samasanta pratyaya which is added at the end of a dvandva compound that too when it is in the sense of samahara and similarly also tatpurusha compound. Now the most important thing is that these suffixes are also termed as tadhita. So the bigger adhikara that begins with 4176 and comes to an end in 54160 is tadhitaha. So all these samasanta suffixes they are also termed as tadhita suffixes for specific purposes which are common to both the tadhita formation as well as the samasa formation and the statement of the samasanta suffixes in this adhikara also goes to show the interrelation between the samasa and the tadhita which we have already studied in brief. What that means is that given any sentence a particular meaning can be expressed using the interrelated words in the sentence. Now these interrelated words can be compounded and the same meaning can be expressed through a compound and further these interrelated words can be processed and a taddhita suffix can be added and a taddhita formation can also express the same meaning. This we have already studied. So this is the interrelation between the samasa and taddhita. Here are the examples. So if we have the meaning at the beginning collected by the speaker in his Arthakasha, king of men, Purushanam Raja. So you have Alaukika Vigraha in the form of Purusha plus Am plus Rajan plus Su. Since Purushanam is Shashti, Shashti is placed in the initial position because this is Shashti Samasa prescribed by the Sutra Shashti. And so this will be the Alaukika Vigraha. And now we have the Sutra 
राजा हसिभ्यस्ट टच फाइव फोर एटी नाइन दिस सूत्र स्टेट्स द सफिक्स टच टच मीन्स अ एंड इट हैज गॉट ट एज अ मार्कर एज वेल एज च एज अ मार्कर नाउ दिस सफिक्स टच इज प्रिस्क्राइब बाय दिस सूत्र आफ्टर द वर्ड राजन एट द एंड ऑफ द तत्पुरुष समास ऑफ दिस काइंड सो वी हैव पुरुष प्लस आम प्लस राजन प्लस सू एंड हियर इट सेल्फ एट द सफिक्स टच सो नाउ दिस बिकम्स द पार्ट ऑफ द समास एंड इट इज एट द एंड ऑफ द समास सो दिस इज द समासांत प्रत्यय सो वी हैव पुरुष प्लस आम प्लस राजन प्लस सू एंड अ टच इज अ वंस वी प्लेस दीज एलिमेंट्स साइड बाय साइड now this is an entire samas indicated by these two long square brackets then we begin the process of compounding obviously then the sup vibhakti is drop so we have purusha rajan a and then purusha rajan a then we apply 64 148 which deletes the un of this rajan and so we have purusha plus raj plus a and finally we derive the compound output in the form of purusha raja now this word although has got rajan at the end of this compound still because of the samasanta pratyaya the compound ends in a so now this is a vowel ending pratipadika the pra- the pratipadika occupying the second position or the final position in the samasa is rajan as listed in the lexicon but now because of this samasanta pratyaya the samasa ends in vowel a so this pratipadika becomes a vowel ending pratipadika and akaranta pratipadika and it will take its forms in accordance with this akaranta ending and it will have the declensions in the similar form of dev devaha devau devaha purusha rajah purusha rajau purusha rajah now because of this a suffix the samasa with rajan being the final constituent becomes now a pratipadika ending in a accordingly the behavior in inflectional morphology is determined this suffix by the marker t also determines that the pratipadika will be added with the feminine suffix e stated by 4115 which is tridhanaid by such dagnai matras tayap thak thai kai kwarapaha so if so this sutra says that if a pratipadika ends with a suffix that has the marker t add the feminine suffix ni in the sense of the feminine gender and so we'll add this suffix e and we'll get the necessary feminine form also because of the marker ch the final vowel accent is also determined by 61163 chitaha let us take another example of the samasanta pratyaya where the same sutra raja hasaki bhash touch applies so if we have a meaning friend of krishna at the beginning as thought of by the speaker and where he or she wants to make a compound out of it krishna sya sakha the alaukika vigraha of it is krishna plus ngas the sakhi plus su and then we add the samasanta pratyaya touch over here touch is a so we have krishna plus ngas this is the purva pada sakhi plus su this is the uttara pada and we here have the samasanta pratyaya a over here then we delete both the sups we have krishna plus sakhi and there are zero suffixes over here plus a then this sakhi has this a deleted and we have krishna the sakha plus a because of the application of 64148 and finally we get the compound output in the form of krishna sakha so krishna sya sakha is the input 
and Krishna Sukha as a Pratipadika is an output. So the word Sakhi ends in E, but now the compound Krishna Sukha ends in A. And accordingly, the inflectional morphology will take its own form. The final constituent of this samasa is Sakhi, ending in short E. But after adding the samasanta pratyaya, the samasa ends in short a, and then its behavior in the inflectional morphology is determined accordingly. And you will have Krishna Sakha, Krishna Sakha, Krishna Sakha, Krishna Sakha, and so on and so forth, having the forms derived in the same fashion as that of Rama also. Now, this samasanta pratyaya will also determine the addition of the feminine suffix ni and also the accent which is the final accent determined by the sutra chitaha now after having seen the samasanta pratyaya and the sutras which prescribe samasanta pratyaya let us proceed in understanding the sutras which prescribe the Subluk, which is an extremely important process in the derivation of a compound. So, Subluk is a very crucial operation in the derivation of a compound. What happens in this operation is that the Subs, which are part of the Samasa, they get deleted. This operation acknowledges the sentential base and at the same time, removes that base at least formally from the process but it does not remove it semantically it does not remove it cognitively that remains there and that is the reason why a linkage between the compound form and the sentence remains uncut so this particular process acknowledges the sentential base and at the same time removes it from the process of compounding so that merging into one pratipadika of the two elements becomes smooth. But this process of subluk obviously highlights the underlying structural presence. So if you want to go back, if you want to fall back upon this, you have a choice, you have a system, systemic support to do so. Now, this process is stated by the Sutra 2471, Supo Dhatu Yoho. What this Sutra means is that in place of Sups, which is a part of the verbal root, namely a Dhatu, and also the nominal root or a Pratipadika, is substituted zero. So, the meaning is in place of sup which is part of the verbal root or dhatu and also the nominal root, substitute zero. What this means is that the sup is deleted. Now, instead of stating it as mere deletion, Panini has stated the zero substitute. So, it has given this deletion the status of an entity and Panini has used this particular technique throughout his grammar and scholars have also studied this aspect and have noted and have commented upon this concept of zero in Paninian grammar. So, this zero suffix underlies the semantic implication that we were talking about a while ago. So, what this means is that even after deletion, it still retains its historical status as a Pada. And Panini has used this in sutras like Nalopa Pratipadikantasya, where we have seen in the derivation of the compound Raja Purusha, Rajan, which is a Purva Pada, is stated to retain its historical status of being a Pada. And so, this Na occurs at the end of the Pada. And therefore, the sutra says, this na gets deleted. Because right now, 
as we see rajan occurs at the end of a pratipatika but it also historically occurs at the end of a pada so to speak and such a na is deleted that's what nalopa pratipatika antasya says therefore na is deleted and we get the compound form rajapurusha we have derived the compound form rajapurusha earlier and that is what is being referred to now so here we have the same derivation process purusha plus am plus rajan plus su this is the alaukik vigraha purushanam raja that is the laukik vigraha and we add the suffix touch over here and so we have purusha plus am plus rajan plus su plus a touch is a and then at this stage this am and this su because they are the sups they get deleted so in this stage when we add purusha plus am plus rajan plus su plus touch these two external square brackets indicate that this is what is a compound so this is a samasa the process of compounding has begun because this is the alaukika vigraha and so this one unit is called samasa and because it is called samasa it is also called pratipadika immediately by the sutra krutta dhita samasascha or arthava dadhatura pratyaya pratipadikam and because it is a pratipadika now this su and this am they become part of a pratipadika and so supodhatu pratipadika yo applies at this stage immediately after the purva pada nirdharana and also the addition of the samasanta pratyaya has happened and so we have the subloka lok so look over here so we have purusha plus 0 plus rajan plus 0 and then we add the suffix we have already added the suffix a which is a samasanta pratyaya and then we do the next processing by applying 64148 we delete this an of rajan and finally we get purusha raja as the compound but the point is that 2471 applies at an early stage by removing the sentential context in the form of the sups it then facilitates the compound generation this is a very crucial stage in the process of compound generation let us also observe this in the derivation of the second example that we have studied earlier where the meaning is friend of krishna or krishnasya sakha and the alaukika vigraha is krishna plus ngas and sakhi plus su and then we add the samasanta pratyaya here krishna plus ngas plus sakhi plus su and this touch a is added and now after we add this obviously this alaukika vigraha itself enables it to be called a samasa and this samasa becomes a pratipadika and these sups nas as well as su they are now part of the pratipadika and so they get deleted by 2471 and so we have krishna sakhi a and then krishna sakh a by the application of 64148 and so we finally get the form krishna sakha so krishna se sakha is the input and krishna sakha is the output and we don't see any sup over here neither after krishna nor after sakha but even though formally we don't see any sup which is what is the highlight of the samasa process otherwise it wouldn't be distinguishing itself from the sentence in the sentence you see sups see as well as this su but in the compound they are missing even though they are missing their meaning obviously remains even though they are noted down as zero obviously their meaning is there and that is the reason why this compound krishna sakha has got correlation to show with this laukika vigraha 
So we can dissolve this compound in the form of a sentence of this kind using these case endings because they are implied even though they are not visible. This is the theoretical implication of this process called sub-look which is extremely crucial and very very important and we need to pay serious attention to this particular part of this important process namely sub-look. Similarly when we have another example king's man goes to kashi this is the sentence and we have rajnya purushaha kashim gachati so rajnya purushaha are the two words which are semantically related and now we start the process so we have rajan plus nas plus purusha plus su as the alaukika vigraha so uh, the term samasa applies over here the term samasa doesn't apply at this stage because this is a laukika vigraha, this is not a laukika, this is laukika vigraha. Once we convert it into a laukika vigraha of this kind, this takes the term samasa and now this becomes a pratipadika by the sutras mentioned earlier. And once this becomes a pratipadika, these sups, su and nas, they are now part of the pratipadika. And that's why supo dhatu pratipadika yoga applies and deletes both these sups and we have zero suffixes over here 2471 does this and then we have rajan plus purusha as the next step in the derivation process all these steps they are rule governed right now we are highlighting only 2471 in this particular process so we have rajan and purusha and then we apply 827 and by the application of 827, this na at the end of rajan gets deleted and the output generated is raja and purusha and the final output is raja purusha. This is the samasa output. Now this samasa output becomes a pratipadika, it is already a pratipadika and so then it also becomes part of the next sentence and the su pratyaya etc. can be added to this raja purusha and you can have raja purusha ha Raja Purushau, Raja Purushaha, etc. as the forms generated of this particular Pratipadika. So this is how Subluk plays an important role and these are the theoretical implications of this Subluk. So Rajan over here is considered as a Pratipadika but it is also a Pada given the status of the zero suffix. So Nalapa Pratipadika Antasya says Pratipadika Sabnikam Yat Padam Tadantasya Nasya Lopasyat. So then this Na is deleted by 827 with these conditions. So to summarize, the suffix is added at the end of a compound immediately after the process of compounding begins. It is to be noted that this suffix is part of the compound and affects the form of the compound in multiple ways. Ending of the compound, feminine suffix as well as accent are the three main functions of the addition of this particular suffix. And such a suffix is added in all four major types of compounds in Sanskrit. Similarly, subluk reflects a very crucial stage in the derivation of the compound process as it acknowledges the sentential base and at the same time removes this sentential base at least formally for the smooth merging of two elements into one pratipadika. The constituent words retain both properties that of a pratipadika as well as that of a pada and both of them get used by sutras in Panini, Panini's grammar like Nalopa Pratipadika Antasya and we have seen an example of this sutra in the derivation of the compound Raja Purusha. It is this base which the compound falls back upon for various purposes and that is what is the significance of this sub look. Panini has achieved this 
very delicate bridge construction which is a semantic or which is of semantic nature through the stage of this subluk. These are the text texts that are referred to. They are from the Paninian grammatical tradition. And we shall study some more processes and the sutras stating those processes in the coming lecture. Thank you very much.